Hello everybody. Uh, this next project is rather dear to my heart and it's more of an appeal uh, to everybody because I'm trying to crowdfund an operation that I'm going to need fairly shortly. It's this finger. It's rather painful and I'm going to try and crowdfund the operation to put an artificial finger joint in it. You might see there that it's it's quite swollen and it's very painful. It's it's the finger I use to operate the mouse and it's severely restricting my activities on Design Spark Mechanical so it might restrict the my output on Design Spark Mechanical. So if you wouldn't mind considering making a, dono a, a donation uh, I may be able to afford to get this done privately and rather quickly as well uh, rather than wait for the National Health Service which is considerably uh, over overbooked as it were so I want to try and get this fixed as soon as I can for everybody's benefit so if you could consider making a donation to my PayPal account it may well speed up me getting this fixed thank you Okay, so this is what we're going to be designing. I must first of all point out that this is by no means a practical solution to the problem. It is a, it is a joint, after all, but for heaven's sake, don't try and make one and fit one to your finger. It's just um, an effort to show some uh, demonstrations of what Design Spark Mechanical can do. So it does act as a joint. One end plugs into one bone in your finger and the other into another bone. And there's the joint. It's a barrel joint at the moment. I don't know what um, actual finger joints have as a, a bearing. But uh, this this is a barrel joint. Of course it won't uh, flex in the lateral plane which is probably a good thing but it will flex to about that angle which is not bad it's far better than what mine flexes at the moment it's completely locked so as I've said in the opening <laughs> my opening uh, address it's very dear to my heart, this. So I hope you'll get some benefit from it too. And it, uh, it's probably going to help me get through this problem. Anyway, here we go with the individual design of these parts. Now the first part we're going to make is the dis distal part of the joint. So we're going to start off with the barrel. We'll first of all square this view up. And we're going to make a barrel six millimeters. We're going to pull that to 12. and put a slight chamfer on both ends control click to highlight them both then make sure we're in chamfer mode rather than the round mode so we're going to make a 0.25 millimeter chamfer on each end there
Now we're going to make the tapered helical part. So I'm going to make a sketch plane through here. Select the center. K for sketch plane, V for vertical if you like. And then we can drag this away. So now we've got our sketch plane running parallel to the axis of the the barrel. V and now we're going to make a we want it's not the grid. There's our center. We're going to start with a 4.5 millimeter pull. I'm going to make this 23 millimeters long, 23. Because we're going to sink this end into here. This is half the radius. So we'll be losing three millimeters of this length. Now I want to taper this, so we go, we're in pull mode, so we select this end here, then pivot edge across here, pivot edge, we'll get this right angled tool here, then grab this one and if we drag it in, we can taper the whole thing. So the dimension I want is 1.25. And that's going to be the basis of the helical spiral. Now again, we want a sketch plane on here. Now the sketch plane is going to be running through both these axes. So select that axis, axis, control, click and select that one. Press the K key and we have our sketch. Plane through it. That's it. Perfect. Now to make the helical part of it, I'm going to need to make some sort of a thread form. Or a nice narrow sharp pointed thread form for screwing into bone. Now this is my own idea whether it will work in reality or not. Another question. But uh, we're not going to make a real one out of this, so I'll go ahead with this idea. So I'm going to use the line tool here. I'm going to start off with a, a long form, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to shorten this. So that, T for trim, trim away the bits we don't need, right. Now to place this in the appropriate position, I'm going to need a helper line. I'm going to start the thread from about here, four millimeters up. Three millimeters of this are going to be embedded in there. So I want to start the thread about here. So I'm going to need a help line. Two, three, four. Then select, uh, snap the grid, turn that off so I can select this and move. Then we place that on the corner there. Select the pull tool, the up to tool rather. Select the end of this line, and now we've got that in that position. Now we'll see that there's a gap here. I want this embedded into the tapered part, but we can dispense with this line now. Then again, we want to select it. Move it. And just move it sufficient to get 
to ensure that it's embedded into the taper. Now we're going to make our tapered thread. So we want the pull tool, then select our thread, revolve it, select an axis. Now we must select the plus tool to add material and we're going to revolve a helix. Now I've measured the taper angle. That's the angle between that side and that side, which is 6.2. And it needs to be minus. And also the height needs to be minus. Now we're going to subtract four millimeters from the 20 from the 23, that's 19, and I'm going to lose half a millimetre at the top so the spiral doesn't go beyond the end, so I'm going to make that 18.5, but it's going to be minus 18.5, and the height is always the last parameter you put in before you hit the return key and the thread comes. So there it is. We virtually made a, a miniature helter skelter. <laughs> but there's that. Uh, right. So we're going to now, you know, it's that one, so we'll select that one and we're going to move it. by taking the, the hub and placing it on the end, this end face, and then we say up to there, and there it goes. And now we've got it embedded in the barrel. Still two parts, but we can select them both. Control click them both to select them, then select the combine tool. And we've got them all in one, one solid now. Escape to get rid of the saw in the cursor. And there we have that. Now, S4 select, select this face, V. Just to put the hex down the middle, two millimeters, P for pull, there's a hexagonal hole, I put that hole in because I've been looking at some of these finger joints online and this this one seems to have a need to have a hole through the middle of some sort I think one of them was in fact a hexagonal hole for some reason so I've just put one in there to finish this off we can go to display click our solid color light grey then give it a finish high gloss there we are to finish off we're going i'm going to right click rename whoops distal piece Now the next stage is to design the proximal part of the finger joint and the first thing we're going to do is need a couple of circles uh, 
eight millimeters. And an inner one, I'm going to make this 6.1 to give a little bit of clearance with the mating part. And we're going to cut this off a bit so we need 45 degree line in here. Oops. And then we need. 25 degree line so we'll tab to the angle tab 25 escape now the angle between these two should be 160 that's right 160 okay fine so we trim away parts we don't need T for trim and then P for pull oh, we've been given an annotation plane because we did a measurement I'm just going to delete that right click delete so I'm going to pull this in two directions six millimeters that way this gets it equally distant about the, the center line of it and six six millimeters that way that's it and we square that up by using this gadget down here click on the Z direction and that orientates it correctly for our purpose now we're going to put the stem of this part of the joint on, on this part here, running out that way. So we want something to draw on. So we've got to generate a sketch plane. So I'm going to hover on there and we see the center. We want the select tool first rather than move. So now we can see the center, select that and press the K key we get a sketch plane running vertically I'm going to move that away a bit this tool down here at the bottom and then we're using the blue arrow we're going to move it away like so again V key squares it up now we're going to need a base diameter of four millimeters so C for circle four millimeters P for pull select it and start pulling it in the direction we want it to go then type 26 select this end corner and we want a copy edge so I've copied that edge now now we can drag it along four millimeters select the edge again pivot edge and we can pivot that edge to or 1.25 now we want some like harpoon thingies along here so that they will key into the bone perhaps <laughs> so we'll copy another edge copy edge we can drag that somewhere then I'm going to hold the Control key and move it again, and we're getting another one. So I want that to be 0.75 away from the first one. That's it. Now, what we can do, we'll pull this out. So we're in the pull tool, so we want to pull this out 
0.75. So it's showing us a radius. And it looks like it's also showing us a dimension difference. So we'll go down, it should go to zero, yes. So now we can put 0.75 in there. That should get what we want. Good. Now the next thing is to escape out of that, select this corner here and we must select pivot edge <clears throat> then select this down arrow up to and we're going to pull it down to the surface of the shaft click there we are and we've got this like harpoon thingy now we're going to select the move tool and then capture it grab the hub and put it on that intersection in there and select the blue arrow up to this corner that's got it right on the corner now I'm going to put five of these along here uh, so I'm going to it's already selected I'm going to create patterns there and move it I'm going to say 10 millimeters there and change the count to five. Now that has made a solid for us with all these harpoon thingies on it. We've got two solid parts, that one and that one of course. Now we want to merge this one with that one so we're going to need to bring them together. So to do this, this is this solid here we we'll select it, got the move tool. Going to drag this hub to there. Select the up to tool on the inside of the ball. And that has got them together with a bit of excess here. So we can cut that off using the split body tool so split body uh, select the target object or well, the target object is this so we'll select the solid then click the face plane or an edge loop to use as a cutter so this is going to be this inside face the way you can tell that it has actually cut it is a little a dark line comes around the the intersection between the two so now we've got a cursor with a uh, a dark and a light block on it which means we can get rid of things so I can select that and that gets rid of the part we've cut off we've still got two objects so we're going to make one out of this control click oops there's one wait a minute I've got to get rid of the cursor first escape there we are Get rid of one, control click and get the other and click on the combine tool and we've got one solid object. Now while we're at it, I'm going to put a little radius in here. Oh, I'm going to get rid of the block on the cursor. Radius, pull, want a round curve uh, and I think a 0.5 worked well. Yes, with our parts that are going into the human body, I think little radii are good. So we'll have another one on there. Uh, I'm just going to put a, a chamfer type on that one, 0 0.25. 
and while, while I'm at it I'm going to put a, a round on there around 0.5 yeah well uh, that's it more or less while we're we're at it we can give it a colour now I'm noticing we've got a pattern here so I don't seem to be able to turn it off but we can delete it so that deleted it that keeps things simple so choose the solid going to make it a different material from the other one so we'll that's my color for bronze metallic finish high gloss bronze gorgeous might as well give it the name <clears throat> a rename optimal P. and we'll control S and save it right this little piece there this is going to be a proximal piece save the final stage of this process now is to bring these two parts together and make a little assembly so we'll control N for new. Oh, get in the program first. There we are. And now we're going to bring in a file, distal piece, and a proximal piece. Oh, it's very nearly done for us. Look. Now that's happened because. Although I made this one pull this part out six millimeters one one way and six millimeters the other, I didn't do it for that one. That's why it's off by half its width. What no problem. We can just simply select it, move that to this end face, select the direction we want to go. up to and click the end face and there it is now the more observant of you will have noticed that there's a foul here right here so if we go to display there's a handy little gadget here show uh, body interference now can you see that redness that's showing but there's an interference between this part and that part so here's how we get rid of that so these two are in line now of course so I'm going to move I'm going to move this part slightly more now it just so happens that this is in the center so I'm going to move it a little way to make it more of an interference now I'm going to use this part here to cut a lump out of out of here so the tool I'm going to use to do that is the combine tool so we select that and it says select the target object well this is going to be this part here which is the part we're going to take a piece out of so I've selected that then select the cutter object well, let's see the other part so keep your eye over over here and you'll see an extra piece appear so I'm going to click click on that there we are <clears throat> that's one of those is the part we've cut out <clears throat> So it's that one. 
that's solid so right click on that and delete it and then the escape key we don't want to delete anymore so I want to get rid of this cursor with a block in it so select that and move it and that's I've got rid of that now move this piece here move to shift that to central position and we can turn this away and have a look at the part we've cut out cut that piece out now to create a bit of clearance on this then go to the pull tool select that face in there and pull that slightly make it make, make it a bit bigger but not much just going to make it point one bigger that's all So now, when we go straight, so move, that solid part, move, go to the center, and when we move this to virtually straight, we've got clearance in there. So now we can straighten our finger. In fact, we could bend it back a bit if we <laughs> if we wanted to. Double jointed, so we can go from really straight right round to here. Now we can do the same thing over here. Well, perhaps we should have uh, hadn't shouldn't have put so many spirals in here. Perhaps we should have. So I'll start the spiral from up there somewhere because these are going to interfere yeah so you see you think of all these things too late then you could have cut another piece out here so you could bend your finger right round to uh, this crazy angle but uh, if you if you really made a one to actually use you could think of all these things. Anyway, so there we are. There's a sort of rudimentary finger joint, the principle of the thing anyway. I don't know if the guys in doing this uh, properly might have thought of other much better ideas, like trying to simulate exactly a real joint with two like ball and sockets uh to use which is the way nature has done it but perhaps we can improve on nature i don't know anyway i hope you've enjoyed that and maybe found it useful thank you bye